Hi everyone and welcome to this art supply video. In this video I want to discuss all of the equipment that I've been using in my drawing and painting videos. Uh, I've upgraded a few things since last time uh, so hopefully this helps out in some way. Uh, I also want to mention before I start that when it comes down to art supplies um, it's really important that you don't worry too much about the equipment you have. It's all about finding your own personal preferences and the equipment that fits your style and the way you work. Um, it's taken me a long time to build up any kind of collection uh, because I've kind of slowly built this up through trial and error. Every now and then I'll pick up something new and test it and see if it fits the style that I like to use. Uh, and that's how I kind of approach this. So to start off, the pencil that you always see me use in these videos, this is the Pentel P207 0.7mm mechanical pencil um, and inside it I use HB high polymer leads. Um, I know that some people recommend not to use mechanical pencils for some of the drawings I work on, but for me it's just purely down to personal preference and it's the pencil that I've always loved using since I started using it about five years ago. Um, I, I think it's awesome and um, I love being able to get those really fine details down with it and also these these leads are extremely strong I found that I can add a lot of pressure and they don't snap so it allows me to get some surprisingly dark shading out of these leads and also alongside this I have a bunch of regular H and B pencils uh, I particularly like using 6B and 8B pencils to add really dark shading to some of the drawings uh, so I have a bunch of these pencils in the desk beside me Following on from that, when I want to add a smooth texture to my pencil shading, I like to use blending sticks. In particular, I've been using De La Rowney blending sticks. They come in a set of 10 and they're very cheap. Um, but the thing I like about them is that they come in a range of sizes. I found that the thicker ones are extremely helpful for skin tones, and the finer ones really help me when I'm working on fur. Uh, also, speaking of fur, um, I like to use a small eraser, um, and I've recently been using this one called a Tombow Mono Eraser. Um, it really helps to add fine highlights. Um, so I use it to add highlights to drawings, but I've also found it to be extremely helpful with fur and adding layers to that. Moving on from that, when I want to work on pen outlines for the fan art or the fantasy art drawings, I really, I've recently, I've absolutely loved using a Copic Molsona SP 0.03mm. Uh, the pen tip is incredibly fine, so this allows me to have extra control over the line work. So recently I've ended up spending a lot more time on the outlines, uh, which I, I genuinely really enjoy anyway. Um, but I'm, I've been really pleased with the results, so I'm so happy I found this pen. Uh, along with that, to add thicker outlines, I like to use the Pigma Micron pens. Uh, specifically, I've been using 03, 05 and 08. The 08 has been really helpful with the thicker outlines. You might have also occasionally seen me use a Pentel brush pen. I used it a lot a couple of years ago when I'd just started using Copic markers. Um, and it's awesome. It really changes your style and it's a real challenge to use. And that's what makes it really fun. Um, I also used it during Inktober, and it was really helpful for that as well. I've also enjoyed using coloured Copic Moissanders for my drawings. Uh, I found that using sepia and wine colours were just awesome, and they added a real different look to some of my drawings. Uh, it can be nice to change up from just black outlines every now and then. Another pen that I've been trying out is the Copic Drawing Pen F01, which has a fountain pen nib which is awesome. I hadn't thought of trying that before, but it's uh, it's really fun to use and it definitely changes up your style again. When it comes to adding highlights, there's one pen in particular that's helped me out so much over the past few years, and that is the Uniball Signo Broad White Ink Pen. Um, as a lot of you know, I love adding highlights to drawings. Uh, usually the Copic marker drawings, um, I add lots of highlights to them. And this pen always helps me when I want to add some white paint, opaque highlights. I've built up my collection of Copic Chow markers over the past couple of years. I started off with Copic Chow Set B with 36 different colours. And then a year later, I picked up Copic Chow Set B with 72 different colours, just adding to that collection. Uh, I was super lucky with the colour choices and they've really suited the drawings that I wanted to work on. Um, I've also now set them up in a rack at the side of my desk and I, I'm so, it's just really encouraging and motivating to see all of those pens every day, um, knowing that I have all those colour choices 
And I also just feel really lucky to have markers like this. I never would have imagined that I'd ever have a collection like this, and I'm really pleased with it. Alongside them, to keep some of the colours going, I've, I've picked up quite a few refills of the specific markers that I use the most. It's definitely needed because uh, I work on a lot of Copic marker drawings these days. Alongside the Copics, I also love using Prismacolor pencils. I've picked up a couple of sets over the past few years and they've always been amazing. Um, I love the way Prismacolors blend and their vibrant and saturated colours are uh, always just amazing to see on white paper and also on the, the toned tan paper that I use. Um, on any kind of mid-tone, the, their vibrant and bright colours really stand out. A and the black and white Prismacolor pencils also just come in super helpful for the Copic drawings. A and just in general, they help me out in so many ways. Recently, I've been working on more watercolour paintings, which I found to be thoroughly enjoyable, uh, a really rewarding process and very relaxing. Um, and I definitely intend to work on more soon. Uh, the watercolour paints that I've been using, uh, it's been a set of Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolours, a 45 half pan set. My mum bought me these for my birthday last year. Um, along with uh, Windsor and Newton Cotman brushes, they were recommended with the set and they've been awesome so far as well. Um, I, I love using this set and I, I really want to work on more paintings soon. And also when I want to add highlights to my watercolour paintings, I've been using this white acrylic paint by Reeves. I had this pot of paint, um, I've had this for about seven years I think. Um, I haven't had any reason to use lots of it, I haven't worked on any acrylic paintings for a while and I've only been using it for adding highlights to these paintings, so it's lasted a very long time. And lastly, in terms of the paper that I like to use for each of my drawings and paintings, for the pencil and Copic drawings, I like to use smooth Bristol board, either from Canson or Strathmore. I found both brands to work perfectly well. For the toned tan drawings that you see me work on, the paper that I use is from a Dela Rowney Earthbound sketchbook, which is 100% recycled. It's a fantastic mid-tone tan paper with uh, all of these details that you can see if you look close up. Um, but the, the paper itself is extremely smooth, so it works perfectly with Copics and Prismacolor pencils and anything you want to use. Um, I found it to work perfectly for Inktober last year. Then, when I've been working on the watercolour paintings, uh, I've recently been using Arches Aquarel Hot Pressed, which is 300 GSM. Uh, I've been really impressed with this, it works amazingly. And then also for the Cheap Art Supply Challenge recently, I was using Dela Rowney Aquafine Cold Pressed, which is also 300 GSM. Um, this has a much rougher texture, and I also loved using this as well. Uh, I definitely want to use both of these papers again. And that's it for all of my art supplies that I've been using recently and over the past year or so. Um, I feel really lucky to have a collection like this and it's just been built up over the past five years of just trial and error like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for, to all of you for encouraging me and motivating me in this art career, I guess. I, a collection like this wouldn't wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for your support and your encouragement for giving me the the motivation to try all of this um, and i i would love to continue building this collection and uh, try lots of new stuff in the future when it comes to art supplies it really is all about finding your own personal preferences um, and finding stuff that suits your style and i'm really glad that i'm slowly starting to build up a collection like this it's taken a lot of time uh, but it's slowly getting there. I really hope this video helps out in some way and just thank you so much again. If you want to see more painting and drawing videos then be sure to subscribe and any likes or shares on this video, um, I really appreciate them. If you want to follow my progress and keep updated with all of the things I work on through the week then be sure to check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And once again thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helps out and I hope you're having an awesome day and I'll see you all soon.